If fighting in the street wasn't scary enough, now we're fighting someone that's much bigger than us. Now what do we do? In this video, I'm going to be breaking down a few key details on how we can control distance, stay out of the range of your opponent, and if he does manage to close the distance and clinch you, I'm going to give you a few bulletproof tactics on how to defend against getting slammed, etc, etc. Stay tuned. You're fighting a bigger person. Scary. Right? I'm scared if I'm fighting a bigger person. Hypothetically, if I was fighting someone bigger than me, I'd be nervous about that. Let's say it's happening. Context, most street fighting scenarios you're gonna deal with are gonna be unexpected. The element of surprise is gonna be prevalent. So understand the context of this video. You and that one person agree to a fight and or there's none of his friends around, there's none of your friends around and you decide to go at it. That's the context, okay? So this is going down. How can I deal with a bigger person? What are some of the stand-up principles that I can follow to help me mitigate damage? And if they clinch me, what are some simple tactics that I can use to stay out of harm's way? This person's grabbing you from behind now. This is the scenario we're gonna start with. Someone comes from behind you and tries to grab you. They have ill intention. They're looking to pick you up off your feet and slam you down to the ground. Otherwise, they're not giving you hugs. There's no hugs going on. They're trying to pick you up and slam you down. So let's take a look at this. Let me give you a bulletproof defense. I'm in a street fight. For whatever reason, the person managed to get behind me. They're a bigger person. This is damaging, damaging. But guess what? Not in this scenario, because I'm bigger than most people. We discussed that. But if she was hypothetically bigger than me, what does that mean? Her head would be higher than mine. But I can even do something a little bit more. If they're grabbing around my body, as you can see here, they're favoring one hand over the other. That's the nature of the human structure. They're always going to favor one hand over the other. In this case, it's her left hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with two of my hands, make contact with her top hand. So from here, I grab. I start to sit into a seat. And watch how I roll her thumb here forward. I roll forward and it puts a tremendous amount of stress on the actual wrist itself. It's essentially a wrist lock, right? So as I start to roll her wrist forward, this taller person, stand up higher because you're taller than me, and I start to lower my body. From here, watch what I do as I break her grip. Whether I break it or not, I can care less. This isn't wrestling. I'm going to drive my head forward and I'm going to push off my toes and slam my head directly back into their nose. <laughs> so this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to break the grip, lower my body like I'm sitting into a chair, and then from this position, I'm gonna rocket my head back right to the soft part of the nose and look to break that nose, causing tears to, to, to fill up their eyes. Naturally, they're gonna panic and let go, okay? No one, no one who gets punched in the nose doesn't respond. Imagine a big fist. Your head is like a giant fist. Let's take a look at it one more time. Let's do a quick uh, review. I didn't want to catch you with the bill, the bill on the nose, so I had to flex it over. So it tries to grab me. What I do, I target the, the top arm and I start to sit into that chair. As I sit into that chair, I walk my feet away, puts a lot of stress on the hands, but watch this, it hold me tight. From here, I throw my head back, and I, or forward rather, and I jam it back, boom, just like so. From here, usually most people are gonna let go and that's gonna give you the chance to start to monitor distance, etc., etc. They grab you from behind, it's gonna be the last time they ever grab someone from behind. Now this person's trying to grab me from the front. This happens every time. You do the you do the percentages, Google it. How many conflicts end up in a clinch? A lot is the answer. So let me tell you something. This bigger person tries to grab me, they make a forward grip, what am I gonna do? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to create space with their head. So I could technically teach you how to pummel your arm through, right? How to defend by going double over hooks and creating space with your hips, using knees, using foot stomps, et cetera, et cetera. And we're gonna do tons of those videos. But today, we're talking about doing damage and getting out of it. This is a bigger person. I'm not looking to work body lock techniques with a guy who's bigger than me. So as this person body locks me, what am I gonna do? I'll tell you. I'm gonna create space with my hands, blah, 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 push their head away, and then I'm gonna slam my head into their chin, nose, or eyebrow area. So I'm gonna go here, and wow, I'm gonna slam as hard as I can, as many times as I can. So pushing the head away not just creates space, but it also holds their head in position so they can't slip my headbutt. So number one, push the head away. Okay, I create space, but what do I also do? Holds their head in place. Slam it, slam it. Move your head out of the way and slam your head right into their chin or their nose as hard as you can. Let's take a look at another option we have. This person wants to grab me from the front. This is gonna be the most probable. And they end up with double underhooks. Complete control, right? I push the head away, that was one. Number two, we're gonna box the ears. So I'm gonna give them the Mickey Mouse treatment. I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna slap as hard as I can. Both palms are gonna come in, and I'm gonna slap right on the ears. So I'm gonna come, slap right on the ears, okay? You can combine these now. You can push, slam, slap, 
all techniques that you can use to get them off of you. But this person's relentless. You slap their ears, they giggle. You headbutt, they giggle. Now, I'm gonna use both of my thumbs, and I'm gonna dig my thumbs right into their eye socket, and I'm gonna push my thumbs towards the cerebellum, all the way in towards the cerebellum. So I'm gonna push, 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 push. You can even combine the space creation. So from here, I can push the thumbs in, push the head away, headbutt while you're gouging the eyes. Come back to the pop afterwards. Now, if you're going with a true sadist, a, a masochist, if you will, someone that's a, that loves fear, uh, rather that loves pain, none of these none of these tactics have been working. I've used my uh, my thumbs, and the person's like Michael Myers, bigger, stronger, and just a, a pure passion for pain. This person has. So I got one that's guaranteed to work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually stabilize the head. You can do this in a myriad of different ways. I'm gonna use both of my hands around the sides of the head, and from here I'm gonna open my mouth wide and I'm gonna take a bite right on the soft part of the nose. Don't go to the bone, go right after the bone, right on the little honker part. And I'm gonna take a bite here, and then from here, I'm gonna bite down, and always remember, twist and then head back. So here, twist, head back. And then from here, you can head butt, you can eye gouge. These are all things that are gonna keep you alive against a bigger person. If they come from the front, you're hitting them with the eye gouge, you're boxing their ears, you're pushing their head away, creating space. And last but not least, if it's you and this other person, you're going to war one-on-one, -on -one, and they will not let go of you. If they're bigger, they're gonna pick you up and slam you on your head on the cement, and you can die. People have died from this. Take a bite off that nose, twist it, lock back, and the nose will come off. They will not wanna fight you anymore. Hey, you're defending yourself, it's a dirty street fight, you gotta be prepared. Okay, the next segment is if the person is in a free fight phase, where in other words, you're at distance, you're at range with this person, and you know when you're going against a bigger person, chances are, chances are, this is, this is a rash generalization, but they usually hit harder. Okay, you don't wanna get hit by a bigger guy, it's very, very dangerous, so we have to find ways to create subtle changes that prevent him from being able to do damage to us. Subtle angle changes will keep him in a state of subconscious confusion. He may not be conscious to why he can't hit you clean, but because you're making these slight adjustments to the side, either side, he's having a hard time getting a read on you. While he's doing this and, and adjusting to the angle, you're gonna be looking to land shots to the balls, shots to the knees, spitting in his face, etc. Looking to, to utilize dirty tactics to keep the bigger man off balance. And again, if he's able to close the distance on you, I showed you how to deal with the front clinch and I showed you how to deal with the back clinch if he gets to your back. All right, so if you're the bigger person, you're coming forward. If I stay in line with you, you're the bigger person. You're the viewer on YouTube, you're the bigger person. I'm standing in front of you, I'm in danger when a bigger man's coming forward because anything he hits me with is gonna have a much bigger response on my body because he's the nature of his bone structure is a bigger person. So what do I do to mitigate that? I take small steps to either side. These don't have to be giant pivot steps. These don't have to be illustrious uh, shuffles, nothing dramatic. It's gonna be subtle and you can shoot down on my feet. It could be very, very subtle steps to the side, just like so, to the other side. One more time, my feet, steps to the side, boom. Now it seems insignificant, but those small steps to either side are gonna keep the person subconscious, the bigger man, subconscious mind, adjusting to your movement. And if they're thinking, and if their mind's firing in terms of how to angle off to land a punch, they're not hitting you. If they're thinking about hitting you, they're not hitting you. Write that down. If the bigger guy's thinking about hitting you, he's not hitting you. Create small changes to get him thinking about where you're gonna be next and why he can't get a read on you. So now if I'm moving my hands up, person's coming forward, watch my step. Step to the side. See that little angle change? Look where I was in relation to where I am now. That's empty space. That person, the bigger guy, is gonna have to adjust to that empty space. You gotta keep him out of kicking range and you gotta make small steps to the side. So once again, I'm here, I'm here. Look where I step, ready? Step. Here, they're coming forward. I step to the side. All these subtle steps to each side, coupled with distance control, is gonna help you from getting damaged. You're gonna have to keep making reads on you. Now, what about if they're closing distance quickly and the side steps are great? They are great, but you have to hit the person with something for them to respect you. Otherwise, they're gonna close the distance and clinch you or start landing bombs on you. So small steps are number one. Number two, I like to land kicks to the knee. So we're gonna talk about long kicks to the knee where I'm extending my leg and firing my back leg straight into the person's knee. They're called oblique kicks in MMA, but I don't know why they call it that. It's actually just a knee strike that hyperextends the leg. So I'm gonna be kicking straight down into the person's knee as they step forward. So the best time to time this, the best time to use it, is when the person initially plants their foot, you're gonna be kicking their knee simultaneously, which hyperextends the knee and is gonna have a dramatic effect on their ability to move forward. Number two is the good old fashioned groin kick. You got it. 
this person's trying to press me, they're big. Let's hope they also have big balls because we're going to be kicking right through the middle. Boom, big kick to the ball, straight through the middle, right to the balls. Okay, you move, step to the side, step to the side, oblique kick. Ooh, no effect, no effect, move to the side. Big ball kick, big ball kick. That's going to be tremendously effective. One of the most ancient moves of all time is the ball kick. Don't underestimate it. Number three, good old fashioned spit in the eye. Slow them down. As they're moving forward, move, move, move. Right? As you cock a Louie, they go, that's disgusting, or they go, fuck. And then when they're doing that, boom, you're chambering the kick to the balls. You're kicking the knee. These are all things you're doing. Right after you hit them with that spit, you do a quick <laughs> spit, kick the ball. Spit, kick the knee. Subtle angle. Keep them out of kicking range. These are all amazing things that you have to use. Here's a rule of thumb. If the technique is banned in a sanctioned fight, it's probably effective in a street fight. All right, so that's been it. Listen, if the person's looking to press you as a bigger person, utilize subtle steps to the side to keep this person off balance. When they get close, they're eating spit. They get too close, they're eating ball shots. And if they really are getting wild with it, we're kicking their knee. If they clinch you, we know to use our teeth, our thumbs, our hands to clap. If they grab us from behind, we're ready to use our head effectively like a giant fist. All right, guys, so that's how you deal with a bigger person, at least. That's a good introduction for you guys to start to follow. If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment below. Check out these other videos right here to the side of me, and make sure you guys subscribe. As always, we'll be back with more videos soon.